Okay, so let's look at section 1.15, and again, this is linear and exponential, which is really the same as arithmetic and geometric, except real life always starts at zero, so you don't have to worry about that n minus one thing. It's always going to be n. Vocab, again, read the book. A function is where every input has one output. Okay, so kind of like your social security number. Um, if I look up your social security number, there should only be one output. If I look up your grade, in my class, there should only be one output. Um, if there's two outputs for every input, that's a problem, okay? Um, so like if I look up you and you have two social security numbers associated with you, that would not be a function. So for every input, there's one output. And that's a function. So a function's just like an equation. There's an input and an output. So make sure you know that. Um, when it's linear, obviously it's a constant adding or subtracting. Linear growth is when we're adding. Linear decay is when we're going down. And same thing with exponential, except it's based on a percent, like 110% all the time, or it's based on doubling or tripling all the time. And again, it's going to start out kind of looking linear, but then it takes off later. All right, this is exponential growth. And if you go down, exponential decay. So this is when it's above 100%. So like 1.10, which would be 110%, or 2 would be 200%. If it's less than, then it would be like 100% minus 10%, so it would only be keeping 90% of the value. So decay would be when it's under 100%, growth is when it's above 100%. So let's look at some examples of this. So say that you buy a house and when you buy it, there are four mice. You have a mice problem, mouse problem, I don't know what you say. And then this is weeks. And so if you look, you're like, wow, this is getting big fast, right? And it looks like it's doubling all the time. All right. So again, how do you, so you could keep doubling to fill it out for week and week and week and week, but how would you write a formula or a function? Well, real life starts at zero. So at week zero, you started, you started with four mice. So that's your start. This is repeat multiplication. So your math is multiplication, which makes sense because that's what you're doing. And what are you multiplying by? Well, what number are you multiplying by all the time? Two. And again, you can either put parentheses two or times two, whatever. And then you have N because it's exponential. Okay. And the reason it's exponential is it's repeat multiplication or 200% all the time, something like that. And you do not need N minus one because you're starting where you're supposed to. Okay, so if I want to find the sixth term right here, like after six weeks, I would just plug it into my formula. So I would take um, four times two raised to the sixth power, and I would expect 256 mice. And I can check my answer by taking, what, 64, doubling it, and getting 128, and doubling again, and getting 256. So it does, oops, I don't know if you can see it. There you go. It does work. Again, the reason it's just n is because you see how when you start at zero, the number of times I multiply by two is once, twice, three, four, five, six, which matches what term we're on. So that's why I don't need n minus one because these match. It When it's six, it's six sets of this. So that's what I have. Now, if I want to know when my mouse population hits, say, Mm, I don't know, when is it going to hit 2,000 mice? Then I want to know when the output to this function is going to be 2,000. And logs are beyond this class. We don't do logarithms in this class, so we're just going to guess and test here. So I'm going to take 4 times 2 raised to the, and when I did 6, I only got that. But again, things get big fast. So I might try 10, and that might be way over. Oh, nope. Oh, yeah, it is. Sorry, I did 2,000. So 4 times 2 raised to, let's go down to 8. So 8 is too small. 4 times 2 raised to the, let's try 9. So at, somewhere between 8 and 9, it happens. So I would just say in 9 weeks, I'm going to hit that 2,000 mark, right? And if I wanted to guess more precise, I could go 2 raised to the what, I don't know, 8.8 .8 and see what that does. That's too small. Four times two raised to the 8.9 and still too small. So yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's going to be very close to nine weeks. And the way I get that is by guessing and testing. Uh, so I can plug in the weeks to figure out how many mice we would have at that time. And then if I know the mice, I can guess and test and to get the weeks. And this is an exponential function. And this is growing. If I graph it, 
again, my weeks are here, that's my independent, that's my dependent, but it's going to start really, you know, really low at first, right? And then it's going to, you know, suddenly 256 and thousands, it's going to get big fast, exponential growth. All right, let's look at another one. I could have you be like year and I could have salary. And again, these are kind of like geometric, right? They're based on multiplication. So maybe you start a job and you get your starting salary, say, is $35,000. Okay, maybe your nurse, um, you know, I'm not sure what nurses get paid right now, but we'll say 35000 in some field. And say that you get a 3% raise every year, which hopefully, you know, with COVID and stuff, people still get raises. Sometimes, um, you know, it, it, sometimes their salary freezes for a while just because of the economy. So say you have 35,000. Now you could multiply by 0.03 to get the raise, but then you have to turn around and add that back in to the salary, um, you know, to get the new answer. That's a two-step process. So it's faster to write a formula. So again, percents and doubling, tripling, always exponential. So I have my start, which is 35,000. And then I have my multiplier. Now, when it's a percent, it's either 100% plus if you're increasing or 100% minus if you're decreasing. We're going up here. So this is 1.03. And then it's exponential. And again, since you start at zero, it's just n. So this is my formula. So what I can do on my calculator, that would be faster. And again, I got to tilt this the right direction, is take one, what's my starting salary? 35,000 and times it by 1.03. And that gets me my next salary in one step and then multiply by 1.03 again and that gets my salary for the next year and then multiply by 1.03 and it gets my salary again for the following year and i'm going to round to the nearest penny and i could keep going again i could say well what am i going to make at year seven well instead of filling out the chart i could just use my formula which is what thirty-five thousand times 1.03 raised to the what seventh year and it looks like I would make at that time 43,045 and what 59 cents okay and again if I wanted to figure out when am I going to make say $60,000 I would have to keep guessing until it equals 60,000 so that might take me a while so I might have to take 35,000 and 1.03 I know here, so maybe, I don't know, we'll guess nine, um, not even close. So 35,000 times 1.03 raised to the, let's jump to 11. Uh, still not there. 35,000 times 1.03 raised to the 14th. Okay, getting better. And I could keep, sorry, I could keep guessing and testing until I get that into that $60,000 amount. All right, so now let's, um, I'm going to pause here and let's look at linear next. Okay, so another thing we looked at are linear functions. And again, remember a function has an input and an output, um, a fancy name for an equation. And so linear is kind of like arithmetic. So it's based on adding, exponentials based on multiplying. So it's repeat adding. And remember, if it's linear, the variable is down low so variable down low so it's not exponential at all okay and if you graph it it will make a line so if i look at this it looks like i'm going up by 250 all the time so i'm adding 250 and it looks like the start at zero is 500. so say this for example is money that people make and say they i don't know sell and i don't know how you spell it, but cut co knives i guess they're door-to-door -door sales people that sell knives okay and they're really good knives but they're expensive so they make 500 dollars say a month just for being a dealer i guess or a seller and then they make 250 dollars for maybe every set of knives that they sell like a complete set okay so that this is their starting wage for the month and then this is their commission for every single set of knives so maybe this is sets so in the month if they don't sell any that month they still make 500 dollars for being a salesperson they sell one set of knives they make some 52 sets and so forth so so this is kind of like their base salary this is like their commission so again it's repeat adding so how do you write these formulas it's start and it's always plus or minus whatever your number amount is and your variable is 
is always down low on linear and it's not n minus 1 because if you in real life if you start at 0 you you don't need a fix here so my starting salary is 500 because if I sell none I still make $500 my change is 250 per month and then it's n and I could use m for months or, or actually it wouldn't even be months would it be kits right I could use k um, sorry for kits okay um, but I'm just gonna use n so but on my math lab if it says use k for kits I guess you should use k for kits and what this does is it will predict so for example if I have five kits how much is or if I sell five kits that's the input to my function so I'm gonna put input my function so I'm gonna input that value into my function so that's my input and then my answer is my output so I'm gonna take my calculator and again I need to definitely need to charge it so I have five hundred dollars um, let's see if I tilt it this way plus 250 times five and that's gonna be 1750 and again if you extend this pattern you're going to have what that's going to be what 1500 and 1750 so I can check and the other thing notice that if I get to this level how many times have I added 250 once twice three times four times five times I add 250 five times which is why in our formula we use five or just the n we don't need n minus one now so I could give you the input and ask you to figure out how much money you're gonna make selling your knives the other thing is I could give you the output so I could say, um, all right, when am I going to make $3,000 selling knives? So say I want to make $3,000 in a month. How many knives kits would I have to sell? So here's my formula. I want to know when the output is $3,000, not the input, the output to my function. And so this I could guess and test, but this I can actually solve. Exponential we have to guess and test because we don't learn logarithms in this class. But here I can just subtract. So get rid of the $500 because that's, you're going to make $500 no matter what. So you might as well get rid of it. And then that would be, so $2,500 is just your commission there. So you're getting rid of the base salary and figuring out, okay, the commission is $250 per knife. Here I would make this much in commissions. And so to get rid of multiplying, I'm going to divide here. And so if I divide, it looks like if I sell 10 sets, that that's going to give me my output of $3,000. And so then I kind of know what I'm doing. And if I were to graph this, it definitely would be linear. So if I graphed it, and I had, again, independent variables go here. So knives, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is your sets, right? Your knife sets. And then money, what was our lowest dollar amount? Uh, $500. So I might go by 500. So 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500. Um, again, you have to have consistent units. And again, these are like number lines. So you start zero and work your way up. Things get bigger as you go up. Get, things get bigger here. So this is like, I don't know, money made, selling, I don't know, Cutco knives or whatever brand knives you're um, selling. All right. And so you graph it. So if you don't sell any, you still make $500 for that month. Um, oops, I got to go back the other way. If I sell one, I'm at $750. If I sell two, I'm at $1,000. And this, when you graph it, it is going to be linear, which is why we call it, it's going to be a line. So that's why we, you know, if I could write, sorry. That's why we call this linear, right? And the reason it's a line is because you're just kind of going up kind of a constant amount all the time. And so that's what is going to make it linear. Where with exponential, you're not going up by a constant amount. It varies all the time. Like your jumps aren't consistent because you're doubling all the time or you're tripling or 10% or whatever. So, you know, every time you put a dot, it kind of changes. It's not evenly spaced because it's exponential. And so your graph, you know, kind of looks more like that. So it doesn't make a line. All right, so we have linear, which is the same as arithmetic. So linear is when it's adding pattern. And that is going to be like 2 plus however it changes n. Um, exponential is when it's a multiplying pattern. And so it's going to be 2 times, say, 5 raised to the nth. Okay, so linear, the n is down low. Um, exponential, we call it exponential because the variable is actually in the x Component. That's where that name comes from. This one's based on adding over and over again. This one's based on multiplying. So you can see why we have a multiplication sign. 
repeat multiplication. Why we have adding or subtracting, repeat adding or subtracting. All right, hopefully that helps. I'll make one more video talking about area and perimeter, and then you should be good to go as far as studying for the test.